And when it comes to the win, I want to give that buck the win. I don't think anything other than following the moon has had a bigger impact on my success when it comes to killing mature deer. Because when I quit hunting wins that were good for me and started hunting wins that were good for the buck I was hunting, my success changed tenfold. You know, nothing's going to make an old mature buck more comfortable to get up before dark and move than having the win in his favor. So that was a light bulb moment for me. Why not give him the win? You know, yeah. if that's what it takes to get a mature buck on his feet, moving during daylight for you to kill him, give him the win. It's, it's, it's our task as a hunter to scout and to be able to find an area along a buck's travel pattern where you can get within bow range of him while he's using the wind to his advantage. And I know a lot of guys are thinking, what in the hell is he talking about? How do you kill a buck when he's using the wind? And it's not an easy thing to find, you know. It's, yeah. Alan Foster wrote an article back in the day in North American Whitetail about the weak spot, finding a buck's weak spot. One of the best articles I've ever read when it comes to whitetail hunting and it's all about finding that spot where you can get within bow range of his travel pattern while he's using the wind to his advantage you know i want that buck to feel so comfortable with the wind in his face that he's up before dark and, and heading my way and that's what it takes yeah daylight movement do you, do you have an example you could say like here's a stand that i hunted before because I think that is hard for guys to figure out, and especially on a podcast, you know, you can't see it. You're trying to uh, verbalize it. But what would be an example, if you could give one, of giving him the wind, but them not being able to smell you, like a, a setup, I guess? It usually comes when you find an area where uh, an animal's got to make a turn or kind of cheat the wind a little bit, or maybe um, the terrain forces an animal through a certain you know, spot, whether it's, you know, a road, body of water, um, anything, you know, to mm -hmm. force an animal to move. But if you think about it, and this is really how I personally find those weak spots is I'll get on a buck's travel pattern, you know, start walking his trails, you know, from bedding to feeding, you know, it's, it's, it's really simple to know where a buck's going to feed. I mean, you got so many ag sources, you got acorns. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science to figure out where these animals are feeding. And, you know, you find their trails where they're, you know, their rubs, their scrapes, monitoring them with trail cameras to find out which trails they're using. And when you start walking those trails, you know, January, February, March, when everything's wide open and you can see everything. And you just think to yourself, if you're that animal and you know where you want to go to feed, how do you get to that area and what wind is going to make you feel the most comfortable, you know, with the wind in your face. And when you start walking that travel pattern, you start looking for spots, you know, in the trees where you could be just off that travel pattern and he can't smell you. And like I said, it's normally on a turn, yeah. a fence crossing somewhere where he's got to cheat the wind, but it, it's not an easy thing to do, but I mean, it's not impossible. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. but you start walking these travel patterns and trails and just thinking like a deer, what wind do I want? And then you start thinking beyond that, you know, where can I be as a hunter while he's got the wind in his face where he can't smell me? You know, that's really all, all it boils down to. Mm -hmm.